As we've already begun to celebrate the 200th anniversary of this congregation, it is with great pleasure that I share with you that we will be making a special gift to the next generation through the services of Buckhorn. There's going to be a brief movie explaining and celebrating their mission, and then the director of programs, Jeff Harold, will join us in the pulpit to share a little bit more. At 16, no words had ever left his lips. There was always hope. At four, at seven, at 12. When 15 came, there was still nothing. The experts, the science, the testing, all empty. On March 14th, a miracle was received at Buckhorn Children and Family Services that shattered the silence and echoed down the halls. Today, the sound a mother lives to hear will finally reach her heart. And now we can all hear. I'm not you, mommy. I'm not you. I bring you greetings from the Buckhorn Children and Family Services. My name is Jeff Harold, and I am the Developmental Delay Intellectual Disability Director and Moderate Severe Disability Specialist at Buckhorn Children and Family Services. Um, I'm honored to be here this morning, and I thank you all for the time. The video that you have just saw is just a little reflection of what we do. I want to give you a quick background of this child. This child was brought to us from DCBS. He was um, severe autistic, and he was nonverbal, and he had a severe aggressive behaviors. And that is the reason the mother couldn't care for him due to his aggression. Um, his mother, though, was very, very into his treatment. She was an advocate for her child. She, she was there for family therapy, for child therapy. She was always there. She would call me every afternoon and she would say, Jeff, has my child spoke today? And I, no ma'am, I'm sorry, he hasn't. Then she'd call the next day and it continued every day she would call. She wanted to hear her child's voice. So one afternoon, I had worked like 12 hours. I was driving home, I have a pretty good commute home. And I started thinking, I thought about the child and I thought about the mother and I thought, gosh, how horrible would it be to have a child and never have ever heard his voice. So I came back into work the next morning, I went to my office and I was in high mode to help this child talk. So we put all the communication strategies, all the teaching strategies that we could possibly come up with to help this child. We'd done the picture exchange communication boards and we'd done flashcards and so staff was continually working with this child. I mean, every day, every evening, they was working with the child. So on March 14th, it was a Saturday morning. I came in about 7.30 in the morning. And whenever I enter the cottage, I always say, good morning, boys. And the boys echo back, good morning, Mr. Jeff. So I walked in the cottage and I said, good morning, boys. This child come to me and he said, Good morning, good morning, boys. Good morning. And he kept going on and on and on and on. And it hasn't stopped to this day. The child has continuously, continuously. But that is a true miracle. So I went back to my office and I called all my colleagues. I called the administrator. And I'm like, look, this child has made this progress. You know, we have to do something for the mother. So I went back to my office and I was thinking, and I knew Mother's Day was approaching. I called the media specialist of our agency and I said, look, I want you to come and make a video for this child's mother and we want to send it to her for Mother's Day. So we made the video and we sent it to her and 
I just couldn't imagine how she felt to hear her child's voice for the first time. And she drove all the way down to Buckhorn Children and Family Services from Western Kentucky to see her child speak. And like I said, he's still going for today. Um, we have seen many other improvements through the years. What, and um, on October the 1st, we are opening a new DDID campus. And I'm so excited about moving to the new campus because it's supposed to, we're going to have a state-of-the-art campus just designed for severe autistic kids. This campus is specially designed for the autistic kids, and it's going to look and feel more like a home environment. Um, most of the kids that we receive in the DDID cottages have been in, in institutions their whole life. They've never been in the home because of the severity of their disabilities. And so in our facilities, we try to make them feel like they're in a home environment. This new facility will allow us to faithfully uh, to improve the lives of DDID residential children through delivering superior, superior specialized resi residential services in a safe and caring home environment. Um, we will be delivering superior specialized residential services such as occupational therapy, speech therapy, uh, sensory therapy. They're going to have a sensory room. Um, everything is designed just for the autistic kids. Um, most handicapped kids that we re receive at Buckhorn Children Family Services has been physically and sexually abused. They've been neglected or parents have terminated their rights due to, do, they do not accept them because of disabilities or the lack of knowledge or, you know, they don't have the knowledge to care for the child. These type of kids will receive rigorous individualized therapy by different professionals according to what type of abuse the child has suffered. Staff members are incredibly supportive. They are compassionate residential youth workers who believes in our kids and this motivates and guides our kids in uncommon ways. The entire DDID team shares a strong sense of responsibility towards leading our kids to become independent, high-functioning adults in our community. Because of supporters like you, we have increased job opportunities in Eastern Kentucky. We have created new services to address broader needs of children. We have created new services such as therapeutic recreation and music programs. We have our own crisis stabilization unit now. This month, a trauma service specialization will begin and two new adolescent trauma units will be built. Within the next six months, we will be developing our outpatient lines of services. Without the regular support of individuals and churches like you, Buckhorn Children and Family Service would no longer stand. Funding today is trickier than ever before. The government is cutting more and more back each day the for and forcing nonprofits like ours to find additional revenue streams. You are the streams for the future. You provide the life-giving water that helps create miracles, as you just have seen. Buckhorn Children and Family Services is making a difference. Buckhorn Children and Family Services is changing lives, and Buckhorn Children and Family Services is providing a sanctuary of health, healing, and hope. And I want to thank you all for all the support in giving these kids a home and a new outlook on life. Thank you, and God bless. We, uh, it's been our uh, opportunity to support not only Buckhorn, but Bellwood, uh, now known as Uspiritus, and uh, they were here at the 8.30 service. Uh, we appreciate the, all the work you do for uh, youth here in Kentucky. Uh, as part of our capital campaign, we have named uh, Uspiritus and Buckhorn as recipients, and so I want to, Jeff, present you with a check of $31,625 to help your good work there. Appreciate and God bless you and the work you do. And I think you and another staff member will be available in the gathering area after the service if you uh, would like to learn more about uh, Buckhorn. Uh, I want to thank some of our members who go there every year to do a work project. Uh, Ray Davis leads that group. So thanks to the congregation for your generous support to this important ministry.